So the next thing I want to cover here is how using a load balancer affects our application. I'm not going to get into every single way, but we'll cover the most important parts. Now I'm on an application server over here and I've made some adjustments to the routes web file and I've done a few adjustments here. The first thing I did was created a home controller class with a index method and I'm just setting the slash foo URI to that method. And then I edited our root path here and I'm dumping and dying our server global, the host name that our request object has, the result of a redirect class being created to slash somewhere and I'm telling it to give me the target URL that it has generated for that. And then I'm generating a URL for slash anywhere from the URL helper. And then I'm using the action helper to generate another URL to this URI here, the slash foo here, referencing it by the controller and method. So this will dump and die and give us some output for that. So then we can head over to our load balancer and I'll refresh this and we should bounce back and forth between the two load balancers. I've only put this on one application server, but let's see what we have. Now this is what our web server is seeing, the application servers. And we can see that our HTTP exported headers exist here, right? So the protocol for the exported protocol is HTTPS. So it's saying the load balancer is under HTTPS. Exported for, this is the actual IP address. This is my IP address, the web browser here, um, my local internet connection from Time Warner. Same thing with the XReal IP address. HTTP hosts got set to the correct host, so that's good. And we saw that in the load balancer configuration. So if I head back over here to the load balancer, go to Etsy Nginx, I'll edit proxy params. We saw that it's resetting the host header to the HTTP host that the load balancer receives. So instead of getting the load balancer's IP address for the host here, we see the actual host name used in our browser here. So the web browser sends the request to a load balancer, the load balancer resets the host header that it sends off to our web application servers. Now notice here is if we didn't have the X forwarded and X real IP and HTTP host headers reset for us, then we would see the wrong host header. And then we would see this for the server address and the remote address, right? These are the local private network IP addresses of the load balancer and the server that is receiving the request. And those are wrong, right? We want the actual client IP address. We want to know it's HTTP instead of HTTPS. We can see here the request scheme is HTTP, which is wrong, right? We're accessing over HTTPS, but because the load balancer sends an HTTP request, the application servers thinks it's HTTP. So if I scroll down here, we can investigate the output of the other stuff I had over here. So the output of the request get host, redirect the URL and the action, that should be one, two, three, four different things and we get the host. This is correct because the host header gets reset correctly. And because the host header gets set correctly, the URLs generated are for the correct domain already. So slash somewhere, slash anywhere, slash foo, that's all correct because we reset the host header, but it's ignoring all of the X forwarded stuff. So this is wrong, right? It should be HTTPS for these generated URIs. Instead, it's just plain old HTTP. So those are wrong. Those will try to send requests form submissions and all that good stuff to the wrong address because they should be under SSL and they're not here. In fact, if I edit this, I should be able to get the client IP addresses and we'll see that those are wrong as well. I think it's plural. Let's try that out. Okay, great. And we have this is the private network IP address that it thinks is the client. So that's wrong as well. So what we need to do is set up Laravel to pay attention to our X forwarded headers so that it gets the correct information. Now the way to do that in Laravel and actually Symfony is to set what is called a trusted proxy. And the package to do that is one I've created called trusted proxy. And it basically just calls the underlying code in the Symfony classes that Laravel uses and sets a trusted proxy. In other words, you tell it to trust the X forwarded headers that get sent along if the proxy, the load balancer, the thing that's setting these headers is trusted. So you can see in the source here, we'll do my trusted proxies middleware. All I'm doing in the end is calling set trusted proxies on the request object. And that's just something that's in the underlying Symfony classes. So this actually comes with Laravel 5.5 out of the box, that package is there. So what we can do is just set this up by following the instructions for a trusted proxy. So let's head back over there. And I don't have auto discovery of Laravel set up yet. That's in the next release of this. So we'll do it a little bit manually. Fidel for proxy is already there. We can ensure that the service provider is registered. Once that's there, we can do vendor publish. And I'm going to do that as user www data, which is what our directories and files here are owned as. 
So PHP Artisan Vendor Publish. And I'm doing that as WW Data because I just added that service provider and this is the next request into the app and it needs to rebuild its cache of service providers, but it needs to write a new file and it needs to do that as user WW Data. So I get my list of things here. I can see Salver Trusted Proxy is here. On our list of providers here, this is new to Laravel 5.5 that we get an interactive prompt here. I'm gonna do number three and it's gonna create the trusted proxy config file. So we'll do sudo vim config trusted proxy and we have to set the IP address of the proxy to trust. Now the IP address is gonna be the load balancer and specifically the load balancer's private IP address because that's the network that it sends requests on. And if we search for that here, we see that that's the remote address, so that'll work. Okay, so I'll set that IP address, save and quit this. I think we're all set, so let's reset this. We'll go back here. Head on down and now we see HTTPS and we see the correct client IP address and we are all set. So on our application servers, we saw that it created the wrong URI here. It generated the incorrect URIs and didn't have the right client IP address because it ignored the X forwarded and X real headers that we sent along from Nginx. The host header wasn't a problem because Nginx reset it for us, but we need this to generate correct uh, URIs for us and using the right scheme and domain and of course the URI path itself. And to do that, we installed and enabled the trusted proxy package here in our case, in Laravel's case specifically, and we were able to set the trusted proxy, in other words, our load balancer, and because we set that as trusted, the underlying Symfony HTTP classes use the X forwarded headers as it should. And we end up with the correct scheme, the correct domain, the correct paths, and the correct client IP address on our servers.